A year ago, I woke up and I decided to try Godot. So how's it been? <laughs> How is Godot one year in? I was a decade long Unity user. I swapped because Unity has a history of shooting themselves in the foot. They changed their terms of service retroactively. They were considering making you pay a fee per install of every single game that you make. And generally I was starting to get the urge to swap to open source everything. That's the biggest reason why I didn't choose Unreal. Here's the good, the documentation. Holy shit, oh my God, the documentation is good. Unity had pretty good docs, sometimes outdated, but pretty good. Godot's documentation is some of the most thorough docs I've ever read. Like dead ass, 90% of my problems with Godot and with GDScript were not solved with a forum post or a Reddit search or God forbid going to ChatGPT. It was solved by control clicking something in the editor and reading the documentation page on it. Documentation, good documentation, helps everyone learn the engine quicker. I think it is a silent reason for the success of a tool. Second, the Godot community is very positive. There's this understanding that the engine isn't gonna go toe to toe with something like Unity or Unreal, but for what it is, it's incredibly powerful and the community actually likes using it. They could be in this very long honeymoon phase with it if you wanna subscribe to that theory, but I think it's because you actually have agency over the direction of the project. Like you don't just get to vote on features, but like if you actually edit the engine, you could just say, hey, try and put this in there. Godot users also aren't like in the process of watching a tool that they've used for years change and appease a different crowd. Like Unity, when I got into it, was a game engine. And then over time, they adopted animation and the cinematography crowd and the architecture visualization crowd. And it left a, a bunch of us developers, us early adopters, uh, displeased because the engine that we were supporting wasn't supporting us anymore, or at least it didn't feel like it. I know games are still a priority of Unity, but having to appease so many different crowds and become a jack of all trades to be more profitable will ultimately lower the quality of each individual use case that it's made for. Godot is a program that, to my knowledge, is solely focused on being a game engine. You can make other shit in it, as you can with any program. You can you can use any program wrong, but it feels like a game engine. Third biggest point, GDScript is simple and so much easier to write and understand at a glance than C Sharp or C++. Just look at this. These are function declaration lines. This is so much simpler to understand than this. It immediately shows you that this is a function because it says funk right there. It, it's not trying to describe scope or anything that you don't really understand when you're a first time programmer. And the arrow shows you maybe subconsciously that what is on the left of it is input and what is on the right is output. You don't have to have the arrow, but it's something that I think makes things easier to understand without comments. And I like to statically type shit, so it's necessary. The learning curve for GDScript is much less steep which means that more people can make games. Most people aren't making massive games. So it is okay to make something readable at the downside of it not being as performant. It is still very performant and computers have gotten insanely good. Unless you're making something massive, you really don't need to optimize. Like Undertale, spaghetti code. Uh, Stardew Valley, from what I've heard, spaghetti code. Godot overall is a great hobby engine. It's much easier to pick up than Unity or Unreal, and it runs on pretty much every computer that I own. Plus, it integrates seamlessly with Git. It actually encourages that you use version control. I use version control to sort of keep projects on, on multiple computers and, and iterate them. And because it uses Git, I don't have to touch Perforce, which is always a plus. So time for the bad. Godot as an engine is not as widely supported as Unity or Unreal. This only really matters if you wanna get a job in the industry. <clears throat> I do. <laughs> I actually did some work at a studio in the last year. While I was learning Godot, I was also learning Unreal Engine 5 for this studio. I'm not able to talk about the company or the game, nor the trials and tribulations of the studio for the six or so months that I was there. But what I can talk about is that this studio sucked off Unreal Engine like their life fucking depended on it. It was mostly the higher ups and the team leads, but it felt like every time there was even a minor update to Unreal, we had to watch the presentations, we had to watch the feature previews, and we were assigned tasks to mess around with these features as soon as they were out. We had to update the engine every single time there was an iteration. I don't personally think this is a very good way of making a game. If we had just locked in a version of our tools and only updated them when features that we actually needed came out, we'd save a lot of time. Whatever, not really a thing against Unreal, that's a thing against any engine. Moreover though, every time I or one of my coworkers would mention Godot or the work that we did in it, Godot would get laughed off as a toy. But the logic for why 
Godot was was a toy was that why would you ever engage with an engine as primitive or as bad as Godot when Unreal Engine exists? And I can kind of see why they why they thought that. I can kind of see where they were coming from, but it was a complete dismissal of anything else. They wouldn't engage with conversation about other engines or or even understand the idea that some engines could be better for certain games. They just just sort of blindly believe what they've been told, which is that Unreal is king. We had an entire team of remote developers who just could not run Unreal very well on their own computers. We would sometimes wait up to an hour for someone to pull up the project on their own computer just so that they would be able to screen share and explain something that they made. The extent of this project was like a test map, a character, and some of the standardized Unreal assets. Um, I've added many, many more assets to projects in Godot and they've loaded fine. They've loaded fine, but it's because like Unreal is like 40 gigs, just the engine and Godot is like 150 megabytes. So Godot downloads quicker, opens quicker, it's faster to work in, and I don't have to touch fucking Perforce. Holy fuck. Context, if it sounds like the studio isn't operating like a real studio or don't know what they are doing, because they didn't. They really didn't. It was a budding studio with like a few industry vets, none from the leadership side, just like a couple of developers, and then a bunch of entry-level talent, including me. Uh, it was pitched as a non-profit studio, a vessel for making larger games without feeling the breath of shareholders down our necks. But what it actually was, was exploiting entry-level talent, entry-level developers, preying on their need for industry experience by convincing them to work for free with the promise that the money will one day come and that this would look good on a resume. This is why the developers did not have computers that could run the engine well. It's why we did not lock down versions of tools. It's why there was no HR department. So my boss would say oh, heinous shit about women, but would get mad at me for bringing up politics. It was November of 2024 in the United States. My advice, if a studio says they're a nonprofit or they're not willing to pay you day one, run. You're probably better off just working somewhere that actually makes money and then putting your time and extra energy into making fun projects and putting that shit in your portfolio. Okay, tangent over. Godot is not nearly as powerful as Unreal and it garners a stigma because of that. And to some extent, this like toy stigma is true. It does not have industry money behind it. It's getting better and better day by day, but it does not have industry money behind it. So stuff like making complex shaders, much easier in the big two. If you wanted to make portals, much easier in the big two. I want to make a game with portals, like the game Portal in Godot, but Godot just lacks certain rendering features that the big two engines have. If you want to use terrain, you have to use an add-on. So Godot is just not as feature rich as the big two. It's getting better, but it will probably always be behind. Second, I didn't realize how much I used composition as a development concept. Because I grew up on Unity, if you want to make something like a health system where things need to have health values, how do you determine what has health values and what those values are? In Unity, you would just make a health component and then anything that you want to have this health component, just put that component on the object. You would check if that object has a health component. If it does, it has a health value. In Godot, it's a little more complicated. You have to make this component as a child node of a parent node. And then this child node then has to like put a signal on the parent node that says, hey, I have a health component so that anything else can check if that parent node has that signal. I'm sort of making a mountain out of a molehill here. There are things that I took for granted that because of the node based structure, it's harder to do. It's, it's still possible. It's just a little more convoluted. It's not as straightforward as the big two is a nice way of putting it. My last big point is that I have become aware <laughs> recently that it is pretty easy to decompile Godot games. Unity can get around this because it compiles all your C-sharp code into C++ code, which makes it more difficult to read. Godot does not have a way of doing this. And if it did, because Godot is open source, it'd be a lot easier to reverse engineer. This isn't really a big problem for me because I mostly make games for the hell of it. If you want to uh, decompile my code and look at it and see how it works or steal my assets, I really don't care. That's kind of just evidence to me that I made something cool. It's very validating, but it's a, it's a definite problem for large studios with large IPs that rely on making money to survive. You can't just have people like yoinking your assets or decompiling your code and writing cheats for it because that will ward off normal players, people who aren't going to cheat. So I, I sort of get it as a hobbyist. 
it's not really that big of a deal, but as a studio decision, it matters. I have some lukewarm notes too. Um, personally, I don't really care about the lack of visual scripting. Some people will. Uh, some people, visual scripting makes a lot more sense to them than line by line text programming. Not a big deal for me. If they added visual scripting, it's a plus. I'm not gonna say that's a bad thing. The engine also lacks debug drawing. Uh, so that, that just means that like, if you're looking at a 3D scene and you wanted to like shoot a ray, like, like if I wanted to see exactly where the camera is hitting me, we would just draw a line from the camera in the vector that it's facing at me. Godot can't do that, which just makes it harder to troubleshoot like physics or collision or ray casting bugs. Not impossible, just a bit harder. Let's briefly talk about redo. A redo? Mostly because this is the biggest controversy that Godot had in the year that I've used it. If you don't know, there was a small controversy on Twitter. Got started when Godot's social media manager saw people getting mad about wokeness in games and was like, apparently game engines are woke. Uh, show us your hashtag woke -o games. Found this kind of funny. But the anti-woke chuds got in a frenzy and started just slinging hate on Twitter and whatever platform would take them, including the GitHub forums for the Godot project. So the mods over there had to start banning people and a couple of innocent people got caught in the crossfire. It's just drama. The anti-woke crowd got so lost in the sauce with these people getting banned, they decided to fork Godot. And they made Redo. Redo? I don't, I don't know how to say it. They wanted to make an anti-woke game engine. Cool. So it's been a year. Really the only reason I bring this up is because that's been the only controversy surrounding Godot in the past year. The big two. <laughs> Unity discovered a runtime security issue that dates back to 2017. So if you made a game with Unity in the last eight years, you have to patch it. That's kind of shitty. And Unreal has sort of garnered the stigma that Unity games had in the early 2010s. The stigma of Unreal games being low effort asset flips or just unoptimized garbage, not the band, like like trash. Unreal at this point is accessible. It's it's one of the big two, the, it's free. It's You can kind of run it on most computers. People will use it to make what they want. And sometimes that means that they're going to make garbage. It doesn't mean that all Unreal games are garbage. It just means that bad games are more likely to be made with Unreal because it's so prominent. My closing thoughts are this. I like Godot. I actually like it a lot. I like that I can be sitting on a train with my laptop and because of its lightweight nature, I don't, I don't feel constrained. I feel like I have just as much power as I would if I was on a, a much more expensive, much more performant computer. It's lightweight. It feels like it's a tool that was set up for me as a game developer, the buttons are where I'd expect them to be. The programming language is simple and readable. And the aim it feels of the Godot project is to remove as many barriers of entry to making games as possible so that we can widen the scope of who can make games. And who knows, maybe one day it will become so prominent that it garners that stigma of being the engine that people do asset flips in. I don't, I don't know. It's the kind of program that right now I just look forward to opening. I, I work a full-time job now and I yearn for the weekend where I can just open this up or work on something. It's the kind of program that I look forward to opening because it doesn't add friction to what I'm trying to do. I wanna open it even if it's just to make one tiny little tweak. It, it, just, it just does something to my brain. I just like it. It's an easy program to pick up. It's an easy program to make progress in. And on top of that, it's free and it's open source. So no matter what I do with it, I don't owe any money to anyone. So do I recommend it? <laughs> Yes, wholeheartedly. If you want to make games or you just want to get into making games, use Godot. If you want to get a job in the industry, just make some cool shit in Godot. You can learn the other tools later when you actually need to. Yeah, thanks for listening. Peace.